Hey guys, I'm currently playing BDOC for 2 months now with about 500 hours of playtime and I thought that it would be interesting to make a beginner's guide coming from a somewhat beginner's perspective. Straight into my first tip is making alts. You can use them for their energy. For energy, you want to use them on hiring workers. You want to keep on upgrading them until you have a full worker empire of professional workers. That is because professional workers can be upgraded into artisan which is the highest rarity. Aside from workers, you can spend energy on leveling up nodes. You do need to have the node invested for you to be able to level it up. The higher the level, the higher the drop rate. However, this only applies while grinding at that specific node, so level the nodes that you want to grind at. You also want to use alts for camping world bosses. This requires a little bit more effort because you want to have some gear equipped. Technically, you can still get loot at low level and with bad gear, but it can be very hard to do on some bosses because of the mobs that are in the area. How I set up alts for doing world bosses is by doing the eternal winter questline for about an hour and a half and not finish it. This grants enough mats to upgrade full narrow gear to pen. Maybe even try accessories, but you don't need them. You don't need to reach level 50, but it does have a noticeably better hit rate. Since you need to deal a certain damage to the boss to get loot, it is easier to do on a level 50 alt. However, I still got loot below level 50 so it is definitely not a necessity. I also tried equipping crystals, purposely stood in a red area, and lost my crystals. So whenever you decide to do world boss on your main, don't use crystals because it might break. By default, your alts won't apply crystal presets, so don't worry about that. Lastly, for an alt, you can choose to make an awakening Valkyrie, specifically for low-level ecology grinding. Doing it on a Valk is a lot more effortless than other classes since you are only holding right-click and spacebar to do this. Ecology grinding increases your drop rate, so you definitely want to do this. 4,000 points is easy to get early on. My second tip is about questing and exploration. These buttons right here show the location of the quest objective. Once you stop auto-navigating, just make sure that you are interacting with the one that has a beam of light on it. Sometimes quests can get a little tricky where you don't actually need to interact with the NPC right in front of you but with some type of box or light that is beside it. In the desert where auto-navigation is disabled, Make sure that you are carrying a compass to see the map. In this case, I don't need it because Hashashin is a class that can see in the desert without needing the compass. Take a look at the image of your quest and find it using the map. It can be hard to see because of all the information displayed so what you can do is right click the quest icon to turn off everything except that one. It may still be hard to see the location because of how tiny it is so I like to spam left click and just see if there's something blinking. As you can see, it's way over the distance and Valencia questline has a lot of annoying quests that would take you to very far places so make sure you zoom out enough and find it. You can turn on the icons again after if you want. As you explore new areas in the game, I suggest talking to as much NPC that has a question mark icon on the minimap. This is your number one way of getting bigger energy pool and it could also save you time in the future because there are a few quests that require you to unlock knowledge of certain NPCs. My third tip is about the storage quality of life features. You can quickly transfer items from your storage to the central market if you are accessing the storage from from the city or town that you are currently in. As you can see, it can't be done otherwise so you can't always use this feature but it is good to know when you can use it. You can also quickly sell items, specifically trash loot, by using the sell items tab. Also, when your horse is near you and you are using the storage, you would encounter this stupid thing where you're asked if you would like the item to be on your inventory or your horses which can be very annoying. All you have to do is uncheck the mount inventory on top and you should be able to get rid of this stupid thing which only took me 2 months to find out. The only time when you actually want to use this feature is when you're trying to get items that exceed your weight limit just like with horse stacking. Which leads me to my fourth tip that is about horse stacking. While grinding, every time you get overweight, go to your horse and pass the loot to your horse, then grind again. The next time you get overweight, get the trash loot from your horse, then put it back. Continue grinding this way and when leaving, transfer the loot to your inventory so as not to slow down the horse when riding it. My fifth tip is about fairy rerolling. 
The ferry system and BDO involves too much RNG. I suggest just searching up how ferries work in BDO and decide for yourself how you're gonna go about and get the best in slot ferry. There is no right or wrong since it greatly comes down to RNG anyways. However, I do have one thing to note. You can get Thea orbs used for rerolling skills only from attendance rewards, events, or coupons, or by swiping. So it is extremely rare for an F2P and extremely expensive for a pay to win player. Therefore, you should only use these orbs on Radiant Fairies. Also, Radiant Fairies as a drop are extremely rare. However, you can just turn Brilliant Fairies into Radiant by maxing them out first and then sprouting them into Radiant. This costs a couple hundred million silver mostly for buying sweet honey wine for the sprouting process. For leveling, it is recommended to use blue armors instead of the wine because it is cheaper and gives more XP. My sixth tip is about pets. Pets pick up loot for you as like most MMOs and you want to keep on buying them to upgrade them. My first tip is to keep track of events. When you see an ongoing event that gives out a choose your pet box, Check what pets can be obtained from the box and pre-order one of those in the central market. The second tip is when upgrading the pets. For the most part, you don't really have to pay attention to what skills you would get, but if you are able to get a plus 1 luck, you should keep that on at least one pet. You need 5 luck to get 12.5% drop rate. 3 you can get from titles and 1 from fairy. The pet should be your 5th. Otherwise, you need to grab some money in your wallet and buy an underwear from the fair shop or by getting a plus 1 luck crystal which isn't recommended. My 7th tip is about seasonal gear. As a seasonal character, you start with Naru then transform it into Tuvala. After reaching full pen Tuvala, even if that only took you one week, you maxed out your gear. As long as you're in seasons, do not spend silver on gear upgrades. You will not be able to use them. The item should have a seasonal icon on it for your seasonal character to be able to use it. If you're trying to buy an item in the central market and you don't know if it can be equipped on seasons, let me show you how. It won't immediately show after searching for the item. You have to click on it first, then click again by choosing whatever enhancement level you want. Now as you can see, this item is actually equipable on a seasonal character. If there's no icon, cannot be used on seasons. If you want to do life skills, you may buy life skill gear, but since your seasonal character cannot use it, a different character would have to be the one that does the life skilling. You have an option to do what is called an early graduation, which is basically you turning your seasonal character into a normal character that won't be restricted on gear. However, this early graduation system isn't readily available. It's usually only available a week or two before a season completely ends. Don't be like me and spend billions of silver on gear that just ends up being stored in the storage collecting dust for weeks or months. It's quite painful to sell them back because of tax. Make sure to check if season is almost ending before buying gear upgrades. Also, after you finish enhancing your Tuvala gear, don't forget to repair its max durability using Tuvala ore so that it doesn't break extremely fast when grinding. If you are having the need to repair gear every 30 minutes, chances are your gear doesn't have 100 max durability. This happened to me as well. Bringing us to my next tip, what should I do with my silver on seasons? I arranged this in order of what I think you should get first. Lightstones. For lightstones, you want to be cheap and buy 4 rage lightstones. That is because the best in slot lightstones is hard to get since it is on high demand and low supply. At this stage of the game, you don't want to have 4 billion silver sitting on pre-order. Crystals. For crystals, you don't want to be cheap even though they have a high chance of breaking when you die to mobs. That is because they boost your AP by a lot and you could avoid dying by not messing with mobs that have a red or dark colored names because that indicates that your gear is lower than the game recommends. You can check the gear recommendations by opening the monster zone and checking the spot you want to grind at. It is still fine to grind if your gear is not far from the recommended. When you want to grind to a new spot, I recommend deactivating your crystal first and have a feel for the mobs and the rotation for like a couple of minutes before risking your crystals. Buy these. 
these. Rebellious crystals might be too expensive for what it gives so if you are scared of losing them I say that it is not bad to just replace those two with crimson flame crystals. Other than that the other crystals are really worth it. If you settle for the mid cheer crystals just know that while they may be efficient silver wise the extra AP that the best in slot crystals offer might just be the difference between killing an entire pack with one skill instead of two or more. Mount Gear For mount gear you want to be cheap again. Having a faster mount early on is definitely a priority but I think that the best in slot mount gear are way too expensive in comparison to the green rarity. So just buy the green light or storm gear plus 10. Do not buy the steel gear because they prioritize tankiness over speed. Pets especially when there is an event that gives them out. Trainer's Flute This is only for those who don't plan on buying the Celestial Horn in the Pearl Shop. You need this item to call your horse from far away. As a free-to-play player, snagging this item is your only chance of getting the Celestial Horn by doing a time-gated questline after. Mother's Warning and a Gift for Papu These quests can be found in the suggested tab and offers plus 1 AP and plus 1 DP. Both of these quests ask you to turn in 3 accessories that can be bought from the central market. Buy 3 of the cheapest since you can turn in duplicates. When doing Mother's Warning, don't mess with the mobs along the way. Don't do it, I'm warning you. Dave's Encyclopedia if you are not playing on NA or EU, I say just ignore this adventure log for now, don't torture yourself. On C server, I pre-ordered mine for about one month and I still don't have everything. You have to gather the materials yourself like a dedicated life skiller and it takes a considerably longer time than pre-ordering them on the market. Although you can still get some of the items on the market. Dorin Morgrim Turn in various weapons and armors that can be bought from the market. You can turn in the items all at once but you can choose to claim the rewards one by one if you want to make use of the item drop rate buffs. Just make sure that you don't actually forget to claim the permanent stats. Pavin Greco you need to buy the prerequisite with silver. I think it costs around 1.5 or 2 billion silver. If you still have a lot of time before season ends, you can choose to buy a dream horse or the life skill gear which you have to use on alts for now or start saving all your silver for gear upgrades that you can use when season ends. And that about concludes my recommendations on where to spend your silver on seasons. However, I'm not yet done with this guide. So next is about Acres Fever and Book of Margahan Adventure Log. A Grease Fever basically gives you more trash loot per mob kill if you activate it by right clicking. The points get deducted as you kill mobs but it refreshes 15k points per day. If you complete the Book of Margahan, you get even more trash loot per mob kill and refresh 20,000 points per day. For this reason, you want to finish the book as soon as possible however you will get stuck on the part where you need 10 fruits of enchantment. Instead of pre-ordering in the central market, it doesn't take long if you just gather herbs at bear every time your energy pool is maxed which is kind of why you want to talk to NPCs early on to get a bigger energy pool. This can be done even with a seasonal character because there is one life skill tool that you can actually use as a seasonal. Pre-order or buy a magic hoe but you need to have skilled 5 gathering to use it. So first try to use the find my item feature and see if you have a demihar hoe. If you don't have any demihar hoe, buy an improved hoe from material vendor and just use that until you can get skilled 5 gathering. Then replace it with the magic hoe. I also recommend buying around 5 or more since this tool has low durability and cannot be repaired. And make sure that you are on Alvia server for a 100% life EXP buff or seasonal server if it has an event that offers more. Always pop seafood meal, a verdure drought, and a life spirit stone to make gathering fast. You might also consider using an energy potion to have enough energy until Verdure Drought finishes. After 15 minutes of gathering with minimum gear, I got a total of 28 fruits. Unfortunately, only 2 were fruits of enchantment whereas 8 of them were fruits of magic power. The fruits are totally random so you may get a lot of fruits of enchantment or you may get a lot of a different fruit. Next tip is about the Magnus questline. You mostly want to do this questline to have remote access to storage as well 
well as fast travel through the Abyssal Well. The pen boss armor that you acquire upon completing the entire questline cannot be used as a seasonal character. Therefore, take your time with completing this questline since it takes an extremely long time to do. Next tip is about the Jatina quest. Always do the daily quest until you get 180 powders. Always do the weekly quest. I recommend doing the Kurum sub weapon first for the AP upgrade, then do any boss armor of your choice. My final tip is about the Node Empire. You should learn how to set up Node Empire but don't focus on min-maxing especially as a beginner where you don't have much knowledge about the items. Normally, you turn the materials you get from your nodes into other materials to maximize profit. However, as a beginner player, I believe it is better to sell the raw materials straight into the central market since 1. You can do a lot with your silver early on and 2. You probably don't know what you should be doing with the materials anyway. However, as a beginner beginner player, it can be hard to find which nodes offer you the best profit and that's totally fine. Your primary focus should just be to have a worker empire running early on. I hope beginner players found this helpful and I actually still have a lot of things to talk about but I will end the video here. I am going to do a fresh start series on the NA server so feel free to subscribe to my channel to get notified when my next video comes out. I don't plan on just grinding and I actually want to experience BDO's massive content so if you would like to see that then stay tuned and thank you all for watching.